Okay, guys. So KV Core Platform, um, brand awareness. Most people don't realize what brand awareness really is and why it's important. Um, and they've kind of let it fall to the wayside. And so I want to start out by saying brand awareness is that long-term lead generation that you're going to get. Um, so brand awareness and lead generation kind of go hand in hand, but brand awareness is its own lane for lead generation and it's long-term. So where a lot of people fail with brand awareness is because it is not an instant gratification thing, they either don't put enough time into it, they're not consistent enough with it, or they get discouraged and stop it altogether. Um, a lot of times people will do things that they think are for lead generation when actuality it is brand awareness. Um, what is brand awareness? It is people recognizing you as the real estate professional. It's people hearing real estate and knowing that you're the one that can help them with it. And how do you, how do you build that? And how do you make sure that that happens? And how do you utilize KV Core with it? I will say a lot of the brand awareness is built on Facebook, which is why last week we had you guys um, getting your business pages set up and getting some content because you're going to utilize KV Core to get the content you're putting out there looking professional, but then you're going to utilize Facebook in conjunction with that to make sure that you're reaching the masses. So we know that approximately 92% of buyers and sellers begin their search online for agents and they usually choose the agent that they call first. So what we want to do is we want to take brand awareness and make it to where they're not even going online searching for an agent first because they've already built that, that um, knowledge in their mind that you are the agent to call because they're ready to buy. Brand awareness, like I said, is long term. So you will get people that come into your database through the, the, the actions that you're doing with brand awareness that aren't ready to buy right now, aren't even thinking about buying or selling right now, but they're going to. So how do we utilize KV Core to still touch them without driving ourselves insane? And how do we utilize KV Core to bring them in? We want them to know our brand. So the first thing that I am going to say is that your market reports are so, 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 so important. Um, they're important for lead generation, but they're gonna be really big with your brand awareness. And the reason being is it is an automatic thing that goes out to whoever you want it to every single month without you having to think about it. So last week, we talked about getting everybody you know into your database, whether they're clients, friends, family, whoever they are. So. This week, we want to make sure that we're getting them all on market reports. And it can be as detailed as their neighborhood, if you know the neighborhood they live in, or it could be as broad as Mecklenburg County, Union County. You just wanna make sure that everybody in your database is on some type of market report that's relevant to them, and it's going out to them monthly. We see all the time agents say, send out monthly newsletters. This is a monthly newsletter. It is a monthly snapshot giving them information of their home's value. If the people you know are buyers and not sellers, so they don't own a home yet, they still want to know where the market's going and what the market's doing. Um, so sending them market reports for the, that broad area is going to be important. So how do you get to a market report? So last week, you put all your leads in. And all the people you know in your SOI, you put them all in your database now. And then you come into each one of them. And this is that, that part where you've got to work the system first before it will work for you. Come in to the particular um, database contact. We're not going to call them all leads because they're not all leads. And on this particular database contact, she was generated and she was looking, we'll say, and, and the ones you imported, you're not going to know. Just take your... Take your best guess. If you know they live in Charlotte, send them Mecklenburg County or Charlotte market reports. But you come right here to the left and you're going to click on market report. You're going to click add a market report. This particular lead, I can tell from my hashtag that it came from a house that's listed for sale in Locust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an area, Locust, and then I'm going to click the city. And even though they're a lead, and guys, my computer's lagging, it did an update this morning. So, <laughs> and then I'm gonna click days. How, many, how often do I want this to go out to her? Well, I kind of wanna stay in her inbox every 14 days. 
So I'm gonna click 14 and I'm gonna click add. So what happens is every single 14 days, this particular database contact is going to get a re market report for Locust, North Carolina, to keep them on top of what's happening in the real estate world. So how does that translate into brand awareness? Think about it this way, your friends and family, we don't want them to forget who you are. That is brand awareness, people not forgetting who you are. Um, your friends and family get an email from you every two weeks. They didn't ask for it, they didn't even know they needed it, but at some point in time, when they're thinking of buying or selling, or they know someone that is, they're gonna click open on that market report. And you're going to be the one they go to because you sent it to them before they ever even knew they needed it. So think about a waitress in a restaurant. Um, the waitress that you have to ask for extra ketchup, the waitress you have to ask for steak sauce, all of that. That waitress, she'll get a tip, but she didn't wow you. She didn't, she didn't become the expert. But that, that waitress that um, brings your steak and your food out with you and already has steak sauce, already has ketchup for you, already has the refill of water for you, and you didn't even have to ask, they anticipated your needs before you ever even needed it, before you knew you needed it. So this is what you're doing with brand awareness. You're anticipating needs before anyone ever even knew they needed you. So number one, for this week's homework is go through your entire database and get everybody set up on market reports. What I will say for anyone that's working with buyers or sellers right now, they're going somewhere, right? So your buyers are going to buy a house. When they go under contract and you're about to close, before you go up here and recategorize them as a new lead, active lead, contract, whatever, before you put them as closed, you need to go in and give them a market report for their house. And it needs to go out at least every month, but preferably every 14 days. And what that does is that makes sure you capitalize and you keep that brand awareness with those past clients too, because you don't want to lose those past clients. You want them to see you working for them even after the transaction. So that brand awareness is there. So then when their friends go to buy or sell, because we know you see your friend buy a house and all of a sudden you're like, hmm, I wonder what's out there for me. You'll have that there. So that's one way that market reports are golden and you want to use them for everybody. Again, treat yourself like you're one of your contacts in your database and set yourself up on these market reports because I guarantee you the market report's gonna go out and some contact from your database is gonna be like, what is this? uh my house is worth way more than that is this and they're going to freak out and you need to know what they're looking at so that you can be able to help them so that's number one um definitely make sure that you're doing that this weekend then the the blogs we had you write so blogs can can be twofold they can be lead generation right now and they can also be brand awareness and that is why it's it's key to be consistent. So how do you utilize your blogs for brand awareness? Um, next week, we're gonna dig into how to use them for lead generation, but for brand awareness, you wanna make sure that you're putting out content consistently that's educational, that's helpful. I will say this right now, a lot of people are not comfortable with video, but People are more apt to watch a three minute educational video about the best things in Belmont, North Carolina, than they are to click on a link and read about Belmont. And why this is important is having your social media out there for people to, to see and to read and do all that is great. But again, I go back to the analytics and the tracking and stuff. So if I am putting out a blog for lead generation, I am attaching a landing page. I do not want to give them the information until they give me their information. Brand awareness is completely opposite. You're giving them the information consistently for free. So they'll like your business page so that they'll constantly like your posts and your interaction goes up on social media and your blogs are from your website. So that's why it's important to go in there and do that. So if you guys were on last week, you know kind of where to access your blogs. But for those of you that aren't, you're going to go to your left-hand menu, web and IDX. You're going to come up here to blog. Yay, my computer's going faster. <laughs> and you're going to write a blog. So you can see why you need a realtor when buying new construction. 
223 views on that. That's from social media. I didn't boost that post. I didn't do anything. But that's the cool thing about the blogs is you can put this link on your social media, boost it for $10, and you have just increased your SE or your SOI tenfold with people that you don't know that are friends of a friend of a friend and you're good to go. And that is one reason why I say, and, and people will differ on this and I am all for supporting our agents. I want to support their agents. But what you have to realize is if you're going to utilize the Facebook boost function, that there is an option to boost posts to your friends and friends of your friends. So anytime you go and you like another realtor's business Facebook page, you have then given them the ability to market to your SOI and your friend's SOI. And for those of you that have liked my business page, go unlike it. <laughs> you don't want my marketing going out to your people. But for those of you that are liking business pages of other agents, just know that that's that's what you're allowing them to do. Now, they may not know that they can do that, but if essentially that's what you're allowing them to do. Alexis, so can I stop you for just a second? Yes. Sorry, uh, just real quick. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. That's awesome. That's very powerful. And it speaks uh, to you know, the, the reality of what you're trying to teach us here. I think just real quick, I wanted to mention when you're talking about video, I, first of all, guys, I mean, obviously Alexis is not doing this for her health. I mean, this is like, you know, if you really want to see this stuff work, you have to actually do this stuff. I mean, and, and it's not fun, but it's what's effective. So, and I just want to talk a little bit about Trevor. I'm going to pick on Trevor a little bit in a good way. For those of you who, she's talking about video, you know, you can buy one of those little, uh, you know, circle light things where you can put your phone in the middle of it for like 15 bucks on Amazon. I mean, you know, get, do the uncomfortable work, get in a place where you're comfortable with video. And it's going to suck. You're going to be goofy. It's going to be terrible at first, but get, maybe not. I don't know. You might be a natural, but get through it. Right. It is right. necessary. It's important. And, and, if, and I'm almost done. If anybody wants to look at how to do this right, look at Trevor Smith, because he is doing it right. He is really, really doing it right. If you need a template on how to do this, look at him because he's got it down. And um, it's going to pay off, you know, ultimately it always does. Sometimes it, it can be, especially now bumpy, but um, it always pays off if you're willing to put in the work. So that's all I got. Thank you, Alexis. Thanks right. Marcus. And, and to Marcus's point, I was very, very standoffish about video when I first started um, because I felt like I was going to make a fool of myself or I st stumble on words or, or stutter or something like that. And some of those videos where I was actually a real person, had more interaction and engagement yes. than if I would have hired a professional videographer to come and follow me around. The professional videos are really, really good, but sometimes humanizing yourself to your clients is even better. And I've seen Trevor's videos. He does amazing. So definitely check him out. Andrew as well. Andrew as well does great videos. Just right. Real, you know, just right to the point, really gets great engagement. It, people, they want to see you be you. They don't want to see, you know, they don't want to see you super polished, right? They want to right. see you, you because that's, you're, you're the person they're relating to. Exactly. And then too, I um, love to support, love to support our agents here locally. So what I have taken to doing instead of liking their page is I follow their page. So it still shows their followers, but I'm not giving them permission to market to my friends and their SOI. Um, that's a good way to be able to support someone and, still not interfere with your marketing that you're doing for your brand awareness. So the follow button and the like button are two totally different things. And again, that's my personal, my personal thing. There are agents that will challenge me and counter me on that all day long. Um, but locally, I choose not to like another realtor's page because I want to market to my SOI. I work really, really hard with my social media and I don't want to give anybody else permission to come in and, and market that. So if you invite me to like your page and I don't, I follow it. It's no, nothing personal. <laughs> um, so utilizing your blogs for brand awareness, again, humanizing yourself, being educational. So you can see throughout these blog posts, top eight myths about buying a home. Um, that's educating someone that maybe doesn't know. 
if you're going to utilize KV Core for videos, um, I put everything on YouTube and then I share it from my YouTube because you're creating brand awareness, right? Look at that coronavirus, uh, look at that coronavirus <laughs> one from March. What I know. I was really surprised because I literally, guys, like that coronavirus thing, I was sitting at my computer in a state meeting and they were talking about coronavirus. I was like, you know what? This needs a blog. And I Googled and found a blog that I liked, copied and pasted it, gave my source, and then I put it out there. And literally, like, it had so many views. That and was so, important, Alexis. Copied and pasted and gave the source. Give the source. That's you can't just important. take the material. You've got to give the source. So think of it. Anything that you are taking from another person, another site, whatever the case may be, treat it like a listing that you are marketing that's not your own. You are always giving credit to that original source, that, that listing firm. Give credit. And I'll show you guys. Um, let me move this over real quick. And I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So if I go into edit, the blog looks like this. And then you scroll all the way down, all the way. And really, really small is the link. And it says original source. And it has the link so they can click on it and go to the original article if they want to. The reason this is important is because it keeps them on my brand. It keeps them on my website. I don't want to share a uh, a website from someone else. I don't want to send people away. My goal is to draw them in and keep them in. My goal is anytime they have a question about anything real estate related, lender related, whatever the case may be, they know they can come to me. That is brand awareness. When, when someone that's not ready to buy that first crosses your path thinks of you a year later when they are ready, that's brand awareness. Um, and, and this is why it, it's, it's integral. So the reason KV Core is good for this is because at, and I'm going to venture to say every firm, and I might be 99% right on that, but at every other firm, you do not have the ability to put your own, own blogs on your own website unless you're paying for it. You do not have the ability to do automatic market reports unless you're going in and physically doing them yourself each week. So what you, what could cost you a lot of money and take you hours and hours a week to do is now on autopilot for you. You don't have to think about it. You go in, you do it. What used to be at other firms, you're sharing your firm's main blog and it's sending them to the firm's main page and that leads getting rotated throughout the entire company. Now it's your lead. It was on your website. It's your contact, your database. And that's what you're doing when you're building the brand awareness. You're building your database it, for not just right now buyers and sellers, but for people in the future. Um, I like to think of it as networking online. I'm using the tools that KV Core gives me to network online. Instead of going and doing a buyer, a first time home buyer seminar at a restaurant somewhere where only 20 people come, I am able to engage with two to 300 people online about real estate. So that, that's really, really important. Um, the next thing I want to show you guys is, and I've got a little outline <laughs> here. So your squeeze pages and your, your landing pages are primarily used for instantaneous leads, um, but they are also really good if you're going to do brand awareness. So if you go to your lead engine tab and you go to squeeze page, I want you guys to see a really cool function real quick. Um, a lot of people do this for buyers, sellers, whatever, but you can do a market report squeeze page. And this is what you're gonna do to increase your database. So you have some, some people in there to brand to. Um, if I go in and I do Mecklenburg County market reports, and then I'm going to put it on Facebook, and then I'm going to hashtag it. They came from Mech County market report. That will tell me, hey, this is where this particular contact came from. So I generate the league or the link and I copy it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto my business Facebook page that I've created and I'm going to post it. And I know that not everybody on my business page is in Mecklenburg County, but that's okay. So paste it. And you want to make sure that when you're doing stuff like this, you're giving a call to action. Um, I see so many people just post this 
and they won't put any words in it, nothing, but you need to. So it's something that you could put in there to get someone to click on it is seriously click below to stay on top of the real estate market in Me Mecklenburg County. If I can type today, guys. <laughs> And then what I've essentially done is I've got a post, it's informative. I'm going to post it to my business page. So last week, part of our homework was make sure that you go into Facebook and you create your business page, but also that you join some of these yard sale groups and some of these um, other little groups in everything. So if I scroll down, I have got this posted if it'll ever load, and I'll show you how to take it a step beyond that. KB Core made it easy for you to, to get the link that looks professional, but now we've got to actually get that out somewhere. So this is what it looks like. Free real estate market report for Mecklenburg County. This is not lead generation, this is brand awareness. Hey, click on my stuff. I'm the expert about Mecklenburg County and I can give you information that nobody else is giving you at no obligation for no cost to you. I just need your email. So what I then can do is share in a group and I'm going to share it as me. I'm not going to share it as my business page because my business page post is already on there. So we know we're doing Mecklenburg County and I love one man's junk sites. They're not super restrictive. They have a lot of people on there and it gets your name out there. So I can type something along the lines of, Check, check this cool feature out. <laughs> and so I posted it to a group. Generally what I do is I will post, I will share that to at least five different groups that are associated with Mecklenburg County. And from there, people click. And what happens when they click? This is what they see. It loads their market report. It's put them on my website. And it's got them looking at things. And my computer is so slow today, guys. I'm so sorry. So market report, it tells you how many homes are sell, how many are new to the market, how many are off the market, the average days on the market, price reductions, your average price per square foot, average home price, every single thing they can know. And then it also gives them some houses because what do we want to do? We want to see if they actually want to buy a house. If they're just looking for curiosity, they're not going to take it a step further. But if they are like, hey, yeah, you know, maybe I do want to buy or I am in the market, they're going to click on these. And when they click on those, your site prompts them to put their email address in and become a lead. So you've got a lead there now instead of just someone that you're having brand awareness with. Why this is important, and I'm going to share some, some testimonial, some validation for you. I have been working on KV Core and, and everything that I'm, I'm showing you and teaching you since November, December. Um, literally this month alone from brand awareness with the things that I'm telling you to do that I'm doing on social media, I've had a $330,000 closing. And the, when they sent me the message, their, their message was, I've seen you a lot on social media. You seem to know what you're doing and we need a really good realtor to help us find a house. That's number one. Number two, um, a phone call came in on my phone. Couldn't answer it. Got a text message. Hey, Alexis, my name's Scott. Please give me a call back. Called him. It's a double deal worth $800,000. I always ask, well, how did you find me? Because he called me. So I'm like, did he call me from a sign? Did he Google me? What's working? What's not working? He said, no, no, no. I just saw you a lot on social media and some of the Union County groups. And um, you look like you're kind of an expert on Union County. And so we definitely want to work with you. That's in just this month alone. That's not the only ones that that's happened to, but it's to show you that that consistency works when you're doing things like this. Psychologically, it makes people think you are the expert. I don't only work Union County. I don't even live in Union County and my office is not even in Union County, but they associate me as that expert for Union County. Um, brand awareness is probably the easiest thing that you're going to do. The hard part about it is staying consistent with it. So I would say at least three days a week, you need to be doing at least 30 minutes of brand awareness 
activities, whether that be your blog and sharing it, whether that be getting people set up on market reports, enticing people to click on market reports, um, even things such as like answering posts on your Facebook page. People are going to ask questions or comment on your posts that you're making, answer them back. And you're gonna get people that say, the market value is not that, that's skewed. You're absolutely right. This is a computer generated thing. Um, it doesn't take into account that a home may have been foreclosed or whatever. Are you interested in your market value or are you mm -hmm. just saying in general? Take that as an opportunity to build those relationships, talk with them. And anybody that's liking any of your posts, there's a cool little thing where on your business page, you can see who has liked your posts right here. And if they don't already like your page, you can send them an invite to like your page. And that's whether you're friends with them or not. I see a lot of people that think they have to be friends with someone on their personal Facebook page in order for that person to like their business page. No, it's just gonna take them longer to be invited. But once they like or interact with a post, you can invite them to like your business page. And what you've done is you've got not one, but you've made it to where now you can market to one plus their 500 friends. Hey Alexis, so, real quick, Kim, Kim uh, just backing up just a second here. Kim is asking how many clicks do you allow before requiring info from the potential clients? It depends on what I'm doing and what I'm putting out there. For brand awareness, I do that default too. Um, if I am marketing a listing for lead generation, and we'll touch on this next week, um, I make it immediate. I don't want you coming into my system and getting free information about my listing unless you give me your information, because that tells me you're serious. Um, if it's a blog post, I'm, I'm really just, I'm probably gonna let them see it for free. Like I'm not going to make them give me anything to see the blog post. Um, and it, you've got to use your best judgment on that. And also if you're in a different area, then people may not click. For instance, um, if you're in one of these one man junk groups and you're noticing that seven or eight people are posting these landing pages, people are, are wise to the fact they're going to have to put their information in and they may not click it. So what I would say is if you're posting a blog or you're doing market reports, give them that information for free. That is really what brand awareness yeah. is about. Oh, sorry. I got to go. I'm sorry. You're fine. <laughs> so uh, she's going to work for brand awareness. It doesn't seem like a lot, but this is the nuts and bolts of using KV core for brand awareness. Be consistent. It seems like it's very small little actions, but these little actions combined with your drip campaigns and everything, it's that foundation. Now we're going ahead and framing. So we've got the foundation, we've got our, our setup the way it needs to be. We've got all of our systems in place. Now we're framing it. Now we're like, okay, come and, and come and talk to me about real estate. What can I give you here? Here's one you know, side of the house, let's throw some nails in it with some market reports. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure our joists are good with your blogs. Then you continue building to go ahead and put the siding and all the pretty stuff inside with lead generation. Um, but the reason the things you're doing for brand awareness are important this week is because you're going to be able to use those for the lead generation things we're going to be talking about next week. Next week's call. And just so you guys know, will probably be the most in-depth call that we do and probably the longest. Um, I'm going to do my best to keep it to an hour, but don't be surprised if it runs over a little bit because there literally are at least off the top of my head, eight different ways to use KV4 to generate right now leads. And I want to be able to show them all to you. <laughs> so um, I guess homework for <laughs> this week is Continue writing your blog. Make sure that you do at least one or two blogs this week. Um, I want you guys to think about, you know, market reports for different areas. Try to create market reports and put them out there in these groups for two or three areas that are close by to you. So think about it in terms of if somebody were to message you about that market report, would you know enough about that market to, to actually explain the report to them? So for me, my areas are Union County, because I know Union County really well, um, Cabarrus County, because I live in Cabarrus County, and then Mecklenburg County, because I do a lot of business in Mecklenburg County. 
I would not want to do a, bar a market report for Iredell County. I know nothing about Iredell County. I can sell there, but I'm not knowledgeable on it. So what's going to happen is if I do get that question, I'm going to falter. And that, that branding as the expert is going to crumble. So try to start out with areas that you really know. Um, then I, I think that many of you probably have, but if you haven't, I want you to invite all your friends to like your page, your business page. And how you do that is you go onto your page, you go to community, and then if it ever loads, <laughs> you're going to see right here where you can invite. You can see all friends and you can select all of them and send the invites all at one time. Now, some will like, some won't like, it's okay. And yes, we're all friends with agents on here. Um, <laughs> so some agents will get that invite unless you want to exclude them. What I will say is this, it's good if they like your page. It's not good if you like theirs. Um, and you'll see that a lot of the people that haven't liked my page are agents. And some of them is where I learned that from. So try and get as many of your friends and family. I don't care if they're in Charlotte, no matter where they are. Because what you're doing is, you're creating your brand with them. So if you have a cousin in Ohio, you still want them to remember you're an agent because when they're ready to buy or sell, they can call you and ask you if you know anybody. They know that you're the expert because you've branded yourself that way. They trust you already. Make sure that you're, you're inviting those people to like your page too. Um, so that's really good for homework to, for this week. And this one will be a light week. It won't be as time intensive. And then try to join five local Facebook groups. So I would say once every two weeks, I am going in and looking for new groups on Facebook in our general area that aren't super tight on restrictions. So if I look on the group and it's, it, one of the rules is no business advertising, I'm not gonna join that group because I can't do what I wanna do in it. Um, so about once every two weeks, go in and look at new groups. If they have a thousand or more people in that group, that's going to be a good group for you to join. And what that does is that gives you a very, very, very large choice of groups to share stuff in. So you're not constantly bombarding the same group of people all the time. Um, and what I mean by that is be consistent, put content consistently to them, but think about how you would feel if you were in a group and every single day, all you saw was my face up there with the same posts every single day. You don't want that. So <laughs> keep a nice little rotation going. Um, are there any questions that I can answer about the brand awareness aspect of this and why you need the business page in conjunction with it? Anything at all? Okay. And then I think we had a couple of chat box questions at some point, if I can get it to come back up. Yeah, so it looks like the only one that we had was from Kim about the clicks. Okay, yeah, how many clicks do you allow before you require their info? And and again, that's very specific on you. Um, and, and it's one of those things where people will argue with you. Some people, I've literally had other agents get on my posts and say, you requiring them to register before they ever even get to view as a turnoff, like to the public. And that's okay, I, I'll answer them and I'll say, you know, I completely understand that. I only want serious inquiries on this particular post. And if you're serious, you're gonna give me your information. Um, so don't be discouraged by that, but that's a personal thing about what you wanna do. Um, I would recommend that if you are going to be <clears throat> sharing anything to any other group <laughs> um, of agents, not brand awareness people, but agents. So Realtors Working Union County, um, Charlotte Area Realtor Network. A lot of people will post on their business page and then share it to Charlotte Area Realtor Network. And then when the realtor goes to click on it, it makes them register. You don't want a bunch of realtors <laughs> in your database. So make sure that what you're putting there, I would literally just put the MLS link there. Um, and next week, we'll get started on stuff. My goal is Next Monday, get in here, lead generation, and by Friday, everybody to have at least one or two leads that they're working with over the weekend. That's what I would like to see for everybody. All right, 
Marcus, anything that you want to say <laughs> before I stop recording? Oh, you're muted. Um, no, I think this has been fantastic. You did a bang up job as per usual. Uh, you can always tell when there's not a ton of questions. Lori has one. What type of info do you send to the F groups? To the who? Uh, it says F groups. Oh, Facebook. the Facebook groups. Okay. Um, so I, I do a lot of different things. So anytime I post a blog, I'm putting it on there. Um, so let me go back and I can kind of show you guys what exactly it looks like. So things like this post right here, um, such a good problem to have when you need new signs, things like that. Um, I will post that in the groups that have coming soon. So if my coming soon listing is in Midland, I'm gonna be posting this, I'm gonna share this to those groups and, and make sure they know, hey, there's a coming soon listing in Midland. And what that's doing is it's all these people are like, why aren't, number one, the people that are selling are like, why isn't my agent doing this right now? That's number one. But then number two, the people that aren't even thinking about buying or selling right now are seeing you consistently. So when I first started doing this stuff, I live in Locust Midland area and, you know, barely got anybody to like stuff or anything. And now I'm going to grab something from McDonald's and the people at the drive through are like, are you Alexis? And I'm like, yeah, I'm Alexis. And they're like, oh, I see your stuff on Facebook all the time. You want that. That's brand awareness. And no matter what you're doing, KB Core gives us some tools, but every single thing you're doing is brand awareness. And I'll talk to it on a, a point from agent attraction. When you're in KV Core and you're working this system and it's working for you and it begins to work, share that. That is the, a, a key piece because there are agents out there that are in the same boat that you guys are in right now. How do I get leads? I don't know how to do it, but they don't have the system that they can work. So share that too, because then you're sharing your brand as an agent with an awesome firm and you can testify to the tech and that the tech does work if you use it correctly. Did that answer your question? <laughs> All right. And then one thing I will say is next week, I do want to touch on, um, I don't know how y'all's listing presentations work, but we're going to be doing lead generation, but we're, I'm also going to touch a little bit on like how to use KV Core as a, a selling feature of yourself in a listing presentation because there is a lot of stuff you can touch on during your listing presentation that can be good. Does. Yeah, and I mean, seriously, I've, I've had two or three referrals in the last couple of weeks from past client sellers that I've worked with simply because they have experienced what KV Core can do for their listing and they've told their friends. They're like, no, 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 you've got to talk to her. The system they have will knock it out of the park. It's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> Alexis, we're already getting traction from some of our agents just from last week. This was a great, you know, part two. We're going to be compiling this for everyone, obviously, and giving it to them so they can kind of put this together. And it's just a incredibly uh, useful information. Again, just to give our agents, uh, you know, a little bit of an edge. So I appreciate your time and effort so much. Um, anybody have any other questions? Get to let you guys get back to uh, taking on the day here. It's almost noon. All right. Absolutely. And Andrew. remember, guys, if you think of any questions that after this call or this week, give me a call. I had a couple of calls last week and I, I would love talking to those agents um, just to give them clear direction on where they're going. Don't hesitate to call me. The first thing out of all these agents, mouse are, I know you're so busy. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm inviting you to call me. <laughs> like, call me if you have any questions. And utilize that, guys. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, we're all, everyone's all busy, but it's important to take advantage of this because again, laying the foundation, this is so important to lay the foundation step by step. So you can really have the power of what this can do when it's all said and done. So thanks you guys so much. You guys have a good one, Marcus. I'm going to stop everything and then I'll shoot you over the recording. Perfect. Thanks, Alexis.